This is CCTN, the Catholic Community Television Network. CCTN and its programming are made possible by your generous support. 5125 South Apopka Vineland Road, Orlando, Florida, 32819. Thank you. CCTN, the Catholic Community Television Network, and the Holy Family Catholic Church in Orlando present the Roman Catholic Sunday Mass. Good morning, and welcome to Holy Family Catholic Church. This weekend we celebrate the Solemnity of All Saints. Our entrance hymn is, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today we celebrate All Saints Day. Well, it's not just a regular Sunday, but it's a, a reminder of all the saints. Now, now this is not naming the, the ones that are named that you know of. These are the people that were good people, but they're never completely recognized by the church to give them a day or a celebration. These are the, all the wonderful people that have, been blessed, have blessed us in our lives. You probably know a few. You probably know mom, dad. You probably think about all of those people who were good and, and showed to us God's love. So as we celebrate this day, let us be reminded that we are all called to follow in their example. So let us ask God for forgiveness for the times we have failed to do and show others God's love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw an angel come up from the east, holding a seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with this seal, 144,000, marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exalted, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. 
He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. For they, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and alter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. 
Well, I noticed we have a lot of kids in the, in the, in the congregation today. Uh, how many of you went out Halloween and trick-or-treating and everything? How many? Uh, I see some adults raise their hand. Okay. The, uh, one of the things, you know, I don't know if you, or you're aware of this, but, uh, you know, the whole idea of Halloween, and it's because it's, it's all, all Saints' Eve, All Hallows' Eve, uh, but it, it was basically started because as the church took over and, and, and converted so many pagans, they still kept that idea of, uh, you know, what happens to the dead, what happens to the dead. And so their response was always their, 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 that understanding of the dead will, will rise. And, they were, they, and then so they took a part of their pagan thoughts and, and, and in, in, embedded it in the understanding what, of what Christianity gave them. And of course, those, those pagan thoughts were ghosts and goblins and all sorts of things. But the church doesn't believe that. The church believes that when we, when we die, we will go to our Father. We will recognize his love. The, the idea of ghosts and everything else, what are those people? No. The idea that we who believe will come to the Father and recognize whether our goodness will bring him, us closer to him or we will suffer the, the difficulties of that life. Today we celebrate those good people. And it's not that they need, they need our prayers, or it's not that they need that we need to, oh, how wonderful you are. No, they don't need that. They're with the Lord. But the most important thing is that we look at it. That's what the whole church, of the celebration of this day is, is that we look at the good people and see what we can bring to ourselves. That we can make certain that God's love is a part of our life. That God's love is a part of our response to others. It goes right along with that, every one of those readings today. From the book of Revelations, you know, a lot of times people think, oh my word, this is, this is all about doom and gloom and everything else. But this, this passage in the book of Revelations, he talks about, <laughs> I love this part, he says 141,000 will be brought to heaven. Well, gee, that's not too many, is it? But the fact is, I don't think you should be worried about that because it's using the perfect, perfect number. 12 times 12, right? It is, it's the emphasis of that, that great number. And so he's using that the perfect number will be those who will be perfected. And so, and, and that's, that's endless. But he proceeds to point out what, how those people are brought to the Lord. How that they, that they loved the Lord. They showed his, his kindness. They cared for others. They, they followed what Jesus told us and taught us in the Beatitudes. And that, that whole understanding of the Beatitudes is, is a call to us to look at ourselves and say, am I thinking of myself? Am I thinking of looking in on myself or am I spending my life showing God's love to others? That's what the message is. The Beatitudes are to how to live our lives, of how we look at the, at the Lord and know that he is there with us, caring for us, and making certain that we put aside our concerns for the poor, the hungry, the needy, for, the, for justice, for equality, for all of those good things that make us good people. We celebrate today all of those good people. And it is a reminder, you know, in, in that book of Revelations, uh, John is talking to, uh, to those people who were the early Christians, who were suffering greatly at the hands of the Romans and people who abused them, who were suffering because they stood up for their faith. And they proceed to say, and he's proceeding to tell them, yes, you will be rewarded. Because you are walking with the Lord. No, you are in his presence. You know, the first letter, John, it says the same thing. Emphasizing that love that God has for us. It's a reminder to us all. You know, and I look, I look at that, that, that passage from the book of Revelations and I think about 
how we look at ourselves during this pandemic and we think about, oh, how awful things are, how, how sad and how, how, how horrible things are. You should have been some of the early Christians to see how horrible things were. And they stood up amidst all the tragedies and difficulties and they said, I believe in the Lord Jesus. And I know I will be with him. Every one of these readings emphasize that. That when we stand up and put ourselves aside to recognize that God's love is with us, to show others that God's love is with them, to give out a helping hand, to work for an understanding of God's love, then we truly will be saints. How many of you want to be saints? How many think of you think you can do it? Uh-oh. I see go, boom. Well, you know, this is, this is, why, this is so important that we, we see here that it is through the help of God that we, we become saints, that we put him first, that we put that relationship with him, and that we walk with him. So many times we think we can do it by ourselves. But we are all called to be saints. I have never, I've never forgotten one time I, had, I was counseling a, a woman who was taking care of her invalid husband. And she says, I think I'm going to put him in a nursing home because I can't take this any longer. He's driving me nuts. I can't be a saint. And I said, who says? And she says, because it's, dri- it's driving me nuts, Father. And I said, no. Take hold of the power of God to overcome, to show the love that you you have for your husband. Don't think of yourselves, but think of others. We are given that opportunity daily, over and over again, to remind ourselves where God is in our lives, especially during this pandemic, because during this pandemic, we we start to look in on ourselves rather than look out on the needs of others. I'm staying home for me. I'm staying, I'm, staying, I'm staying away from everybody because I'm afraid. But the message of Christ is that I give of myself. Just today, this yesterday, I don't know if many of you heard that uh, the, uh, the founder of the Knights of Columbus was uh, raised in, uh, in the process of sainthood uh, to, uh, to blessed uh, there are four stages to sainthood uh, by the church. There's the person who is a good, a faithful follower of Christ. Then there's the venerable, blessed, and then saint. And they was, he was just named Blessed uh, Michael McGinty, Father Michael McGinty, for the Knights of Columbus. It was a big celebration in, in Hartford, Connecticut yesterday, uh, where he was raised to that stature. And he, you know, the whole emphasis of his life was to give of himself. He died at 38. 38. I'm thinking, oh my word, he did more at 38 than I've done in 69 years. Okay. But the fact is, is that he even gave of himself. He died from the pandemic or the, uh, the, the Asian flu at that, in that time of, of where he, when he died. To emphasize that he gave of himself. What are we afraid of? Of God's wrath? Or of God's love. The message that we hear today, and the celebration that we celebrate today, is a message of God's with us. We are walking in his care. We recognize his love. And it's not that we go out aimlessly trying to get, get a disease or anything, but it is a reminder to us that we put ourselves aside when it comes to the needs of others. And as we put ourselves aside when it comes to the need of showing God's love, making certain that God is present. People see it, especially during this time, because so much of our world is veering away from God rather than looking toward him. And it's so important for us to be that example. That's what we celebrate today. This is a great feast especially during our time, to recognize, yes, I can become a saint 
Can you? Can you? Can you? Yes. Let us profess that faith now. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In the name of Jesus Christ, the hope of saints and sinners, let us offer our prayers to the Father. For all those who serve the church, that their ministry among us may build bridges from his life to eternal life of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the nations and peoples of the world, that they may work together to establish God's holy city of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Election day is coming this Tuesday. Let us then pray for discernment so that we may choose leaders who hear your word, live your love, and keep in the ways of your truth as they follow in the steps of Jesus and his apostles and guide us to your kingdom of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that with God's grace, we may continually pursue the ideal expressed in the Beatitudes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, and first responders, and for all those who watch the Mass through CCTN, the Internet, and listen on the radio, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will bless those who have died of believing in Jesus' resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs and the intentions of our Holy Family family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will hear the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we trust that those who show mercy receive mercy in return. Help us to live lives marked by mercy. Grant this and all our prayers we make today through your Son, Christ our Lord, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. To so take this moment to address those watching on television, the internet, or watching or listening on the radio, we want to make certain that you know that you are in our prayers, and uh, we want to thank you as well for your generous offerings. God bless you. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Food of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten, as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. In this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We realize that many cannot receive the Eucharist at this time due to this situation in the world is experiencing. But we ask you now to pray an act of spiritual communion with us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Saints of God. 
Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all our saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrimage to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I have several announcements to make. First, I want to make a, um, let you know that, as you know, uh, tomorrow is All Souls Day, and we will be having our regular Masses at 6.45 and 8.30 uh, in the morning, but we do have a special 7 o'clock evening Mass where we remember the deceased who have died during this past year. Uh, so we uh, want to make that open to you as well. 
On Tuesday, Election Day, the exposition of the Eucharist will be extended uh, this coming Tuesday from 9.30 to 2.30, so many can come to pray for our country. We encourage you to do so. Uh, today begins uh, Vocation Awareness Week. Please keep in your prayers, asking God to continue to sending more men and women to religious life. And uh, last but not least, in a couple of weeks, we'll be celebrating uh, the annual collection for Catholic Charities. Uh, please be as generous to this uh, collection as the needy, which the Catholic Charity serves throughout the diocese, is ever-growing. So we, they, we need their support as well. The Lord be with you. Bow your head to the final blessing. May God, the glory and joy of all the saints who have caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Freed from their intercession from present ills, informed by the example of their holy way of life, May you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. Amen. So that together with all, you may possess the joy of the homeland where Holy Church rejoices with her children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Sing with All the Saints in Glory. CCTN and its programming are made possible by your generous support. 5125 South Apopka Vineland Road, Orlando, Florida, 32819. Thank you. Our family is made up of every race. We are young and old, rich and poor, men and women, sinners and saints. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing relief and comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other scholarly or religious institution. We developed the scientific method and laws of evidence. We founded the college system. We defend the dignity of all human life and uphold marriage and family. Cities were named after our revered saints who navigated a sacred path before us. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have consistently guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church. With over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith, for centuries we have prayed for you and our world every hour of every day, whenever we celebrate the Mass. Jesus himself laid the foundation for our faith when he said to Peter, the first pope, You are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. For over 2,000 years, we've had an unbroken line of shepherds guiding the Catholic Church with love and truth in a confused and hurting world. And in this world filled with chaos, hardship, and pain, it's comforting to know that some things remain consistent, true, and strong, our Catholic faith, and the eternal love that God has for all creation. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Ours is one family, 
united in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are Catholic. Welcome home. This is CCTN, the Catholic Community Television Network.